What's up, you guys? Uh, we are uh, northbound US 95 alternate right now uh, in the city of, or town of Silver Springs, Nevada. Getting ready to deliver to the Walmart distribution center over here in Sparks, or uh, some people call it McCarran. Gonna be hitting, uh, I'm almost to US 50, which uh, you'll see up here is a huge ass uh, uh, roundabout that we'll be going through. And we're gonna go, go west on US 50 from here. You can also go straight ahead if you like to. Uh, I think that takes you to Fernley if I remember. Yeah, it takes you right into Fernley. Uh, so if you're coming up this way and you want to. Uh, Maybe you want to stop at a Pilot Loves or Flying J and Fernley on the way in. Now just keep going straight ahead from here and that'll take you right into that area. Uh, I tend to prefer to go ahead and just go straight to the receiver and go down the street from them at the uh, Golden State Travel Plaza or whatever they call it. Something along that line. Why they call it Golden State Travel Center, I don't know, because Golden State is California. Nevada is a silver state, so I don't really know why they don't call it, why they call it Golden State Travel Center and not Silver State Travel Center or something. <laughs> yeah, unless it's a California-based company, I don't, I don't know. All right, uh, anyway, this is that load of chicken that we picked up in. Um, Waldron, Arkansas. I always, every time I think of Waldron, Arkansas, I, I get other words stuck in my head like Wardell or Warden or whatever other kind of stuff that interferes with my ability to recall the word I want. It's not that I don't know the word, it's just I always get other words stuck in my head that uh, won't allow me to focus on what I want to say. <laughs> it's, uh, I've had that happen so many times. I'm sure some of you, a um, good number of you guys have had the same experience. Alright, so here's the roundabout. I guess I wouldn't call it a huge roundabout. It used to, well, I remember when they were building this, they had, uh, yeah, it was a really, uh, it was a pretty big setup here where you had to come right over here to this uh, gas station area there. Yeah, it was really funky. All right, we're going to go west over here, right past the Silver Strike Casino. And uh, I think the first light down, if I recall, is the, the street for, uh, I'll, I'll just call it USA Parkway, which is the street that the Walmart DC is on. Uh, it's a state highway uh, on this end. Uh, they don't call it USA Highway, it's, uh, it's called something else. I, I just can't remember what the highway number is. We'll figure it out when we get up, uh, up here, though. Uh, I will probably accelerate the footage a little bit um, in the interest of keeping the video um, being excessively long. Yeah, you go, boy! Wow! Oh. <laughs> Alright, so, I will say on the way over here, let's see, I'll kind of give you a little refresher, uh, an update on how what all I did on the way. I only ended up getting to Weber's Falls, uh, Oklahoma on the first shift. Uh, I stopped there really to take a nap, but at the same time I was already close enough where I could manage my shifts the rest of the way, and I knew I was going to be here early. So, I didn't really care if I just took a two hour nap or if I ended up making a whole ten hour break out of it. And, yeah, you know, it was just a matter of when I, when I wake up, I'll wake up. If, I, if it's only been two or three hours, I'll go ahead and get moving again. Uh, if it's not been two or three hours, I mean, if it's been more than that, Screw it, I'll go ahead and do a full 10 hour break and uh, just get moving when I'm done. So I ended up doing a 10 hour break there and ended up making it uh, around 7, uh, was that the shift? I ran 700 miles. 
think that one, I think it was. I want to say it was a seven, uh, was a shift around 708 miles, and you know, where did I end that one at? I don't remember. I think I was in uh, New Mexico somewhere. Oh yeah, Route 66 Travel Center. Just on the west side of Albuquerque. Uh, I think it was a 708 mile shift, something like that. And then the next shift, I ran uh, just shy of 500 miles. Didn't even take a 30 minute break at all. I uh, just ran. I uh, made a quick, I think one little stop for fuel and then stop again. Okay, we're gonna hang a right right here. Now this is gonna be USA High uh, Parkway. Um, wasn't even paying attention to the highway number. Uh, it's Highway 439 North and, and USA Parkway. All right, it is an 18 mile trip from here to I-80. And the truck stop I'm gonna stop at is um, maybe a mile away from 80. So uh, I don't wanna have you having to watch uh, you know, like almost 30 minutes of uh, footage before I even park, and uh, that doesn't even include getting to the Walmart DC, so, or uh, actually time in the Walmart DC, so probably uh, have some quiet spots in here where I'll just accelerate the footage and let you guys watch the scenery. Uh, if you come this way, watch out for wild mustangs. They have a uh, I, almost every time I come in, uh, come through here, I almost always see um, wild mustangs somewhere. Now, whether they're over here in one of the um, the fields along the side, or even right over there by the Walmart DC, I'll even cross the street and all that, and uh, sometimes get hit by people. But anyway, yeah, that that, that that last shift I ran from Albuquerque over to White Hills, Arizona on US 93. And it's about a third, um, just under 30 miles away from Hoover Dam. And from there I ran, uh, and then this is the, uh, the next shift. Uh, it's only 480 miles from White Hills to Sparks. I ended up stopping for a uh, little nap in uh, Tonopa, uh, Nevada, or as many people will call it, Tonopah. Uh, I call it Tonopa only because there's a city or there's a town in, the, in Arizona with the same name. It's spelled the same way, too. And the locals there call it Tonopa. Uh, it's an Indian name. I don't know. Uh, again, I don't know. I don't know Indian linguistic rules. I try to, uh, as you guys uh, might know if you watch me regularly, I try to always pronounce things the, the appropriate way for what language it, um, it originated from. So if you hear me, uh, you know, if you hear me saying a Spanish name city, I'm always going to pronounce it the Spanish way. Or if I see a city that's German or something, I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll try to pronounce it the way that I think is correct in German. Um, you know, it's just my little thing there. It's, um, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to be offensive here with this, but I don't want to, I don't want to view myself, I don't like to view myself as a, just another stupid American, if you will. And butchering the pronunciations of things because I don't because uh, I don't know the uh, linguistic rules of the, the language that a word derived from. Uh, to me, that's just being a stupid American. Uh, again, I don't mean to offend. It's you know, it's yeah, it's it doesn't you know, if, if you don't really care, then I mean, how you pronounce stuff, that's hey, more power to you. I might laugh about stuff, especially if my friends pronounce stuff in Spanish, or Spanish words, whatever, and uh, I totally butcher the pronunciation. <laughs> but, uh, what can I say? Um, all right, I got 61 degrees here, but I'm getting on the warm side. I have my heater on. All right, so yeah, I stopped in Tonopa for uh, a break, I mean, for a little nap about 40, 45 minute nap and then got rolling again. 
I had a really frustrating time getting from there up to uh, Hawthorne. And I, and I can thank uh, pickups pulling travel trailers for that. So, uh, got a line of traffic. Now, uh, going up toward Mina and um, uh, that, that word, that damn town that starts with an L. I always forget the name of the damn town, but it's uh, before you get into Hawthorne, Nevada. Um, I ended up stopping there at the rest area at that uh, L, whatever you want to tell, Luna. I think it's called Luna. Because uh, I got frustrated with being behind all this traffic that was only doing 55, 60, whatever. And there was, there was uh, as much traffic as there was, I knew there was not going to be any chance of me getting around the, the guy who was causing it. So I went ahead and stopped at the rest area. Yeah, I needed a restroom break anyway. I burned a, a little bit of time. And yeah, about five minutes or so, got back on the road and started working my way toward Hawthorne. And again, I get stuck behind you know, RVs or travel or uh, pickups pulling travel trailers that are only doing 55. All right, no big deal if they want to do 55, but here's the problem uh, when every time there's a passing lane. There was, a, there was an abundance of area to do passings with, but the problem is, is there was never um, an opening to work with because there was always traffic coming the other direction. I was able to get around one guy, no, well, the first one, but then the second one I never could get around because there would never, uh, the southbound traffic would never allow me to do it. And the next thing I know, a container driver, freaking bonehead, yeah, I'm gonna send uh, I'm gonna send footage of him to Bonehead Truckers. Uh, I'll include that. It maybe include that here or something. And I'm getting pissed because I can't get around the guy, uh, this person, doing 55 in a 70 zone, and I'm fed up with it. And container driver comes up behind me, and uh, now I'm already close enough to the other to the RV uh, or the pickup on a tra uh, trailer because I want to get around them myself. And I'm like, yeah, you can, you're asking to wait. Well, container driver didn't want to wait. He ended up going. And I'm like, and then I saw, it, I, I could tell that somebody was coming. You know, so next thing you know, he's going around me, and then like, he's never going to make it. I even was saying something about it. And he starts going around the guy with uh, the, actually, I think it was a woman. Uh, the only ran, I'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, ends up trying to get around them and ends up cutting them off. Actually, they ended up having to go into the shoulder to avoid having the front end taken off by him. Um, so, just so he could avoid uh, head-on colliding with somebody coming the other way. Really incredibly stupid decision that the guy made. Um, you know, it's we all get impatient. You know, we all and it's uh, very frustrating dealing with something like that, but can't be doing stupid shit like that, people. Now, um, now I, I had to deal with it and stay behind them all the way into uh, Hawthorne. And I only know it was a woman driving it. Um, I think a uh, you know, um, retired lady, I would say. Because I ended up stopping at the, the gas station, uh, the truck stop, whatever you want to call it, there on... Uh, on the north at the shell station wherever it is on the north end of the truck bypass route there in Hawthorne and I see you uh, first I see container drivers to, uh, parked right there in the lots same guy who uh, cut the, this person off and uh, then I see this you know this pickup with travel trailer driver uh, turn into the same lot that I was turning into but they were going to the fuel island and I get inside and I'm already uh, getting my great refill and paying for it by the time they come in and you know, at least yeah so that's I knew it was a retired lady but I mean I, I wouldn't say like senile kind of old but yeah older than me definitely retired looking um uh, 
Yeah, that's one of the problems when you're going that much slower than the speed limit. And there were so many other cars I saw trying to get around this person earlier. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of, you know, yeah, somewhat close calls, I would say, because of uh, that one person holding up, uh, causing uh, a lot of people who want to get impatient and want to get around them. So that is one of the downfalls of being in a governed vehicle or running below the speed limit. You're going to encourage people to do stupid things. Even if it's not your fault, you're contributing to an unsafe situation. Now, even if the other person does something stupid and unsafe and causes an accident, ultimately, you're still a factor in it. You know, people are going to get impatient, and if you're not able to run the, with the flow of traffic or prevailing conditions, uh, get off the road or somewhere, you know, let people get by you. Do, uh, do this, uh, do whatever you have to to let people get by you in the safest manner possible because they're going to do it. They're going to pass you whether they have to do it dangerously or safely. So why not do uh, do them uh, everybody a favor and allow them to do it as safely as possible. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, high speed this for minutes. Uh, we'll, we got some more hills and curves here and then uh, I'll resume this when we get over to the Walmart. Uh, near Walmart. Okay guys, we're uh, by the switch we're, uh, facility now, uh, which I forget what that even is. Uh, we're not too far away from Walmart DC. Uh, be, uh, the Walmart DC will be up the street on the right side. Now, my first time ever coming uh, up here to Sparks actually was, uh, I was still on my trainer's truck. Uh, this warehouse right here on the right that we're getting ready to pass right now, uh, what is that, Nature Suite or Nature's Way or whatever the hell that company is. Uh, my trainer and I did a delivery to this place right here. Um, I don't recall if I ever came to the Walmart DC uh, with England Night. I think I might have. Yeah, Nature's Way, that's what it's called. It's right here on the right. Uh, yeah, right up here on the right side, uh, where that, I think I see a bobtail uh, on the right shoulder right now. He's right by the entrance to the Walmart DC. We're going to go right past it and not even stop and go to the you know, go up to Golden Gate Travel Center. Alright, so there were a couple of spots along the way where I did see... Uh, yeah, maybe about five or six wild Mustangs. Uh, the first one, they were over on that side, uh, right around the same spot where uh, all the construction uh, workers were, uh, equipment was working. Okay, so yeah, right here where this, uh, this truck's coming out of here is, uh, is the Walmart DC. Rentstrom Trucking. Alright, I'm 
we're going to need to get in the left lane pretty soon here because the truck stop uh, we're going to go to is on the left side. Uh, we're going to be making a left turn onto uh, Electric Avenue, I think it is, or whatever it's called. If you turn right, it'll take you right into the Tesla Diga Factory. If you turn left, it takes you over to the, the truck parking area of the truck stop that I'm, that I'm going to be going to. Go ahead and slide over now. That way I don't have to fight my way over when it's time to be over here. Alright, so yeah, the, yeah, about a half a dozen or so uh, wild mustangs over on the you know, on that meadow or whatever you want to call it, the field, uh, off to my right side, around the same spot where the, all the construction equipment was operating. And then a little bit further up on this side, on the left side, after, uh, not long after I got past that spot where the there was a water tender refilling his uh, his tank up with uh, you know the water that's in that yeah you know, that trailer that's mounted uh, that sits up elevated. Uh, I saw another I think five of them right there. Uh, I can already see the cat scale for the truck stop right now. Got Waldem Way right here, and then you're gonna see a traffic light up here. Uh, yeah, the speed limit's going to drop to 35 as well. Now, there was a spot up there where you think, well, why is the speed limit 45? Yeah, before I got to Walmart, you see, uh, it would seem like it's not really justified to be that low a speed limit, but the wild Mustangs probably have something to do with it because they're always crossing the road in the area, you know, on, uh, around this, you know, here on the USA Parkway, and... Um, uh, there's more parking over here too, by the way, if you uh, if you want somewhere to park. Uh, I knew that was not going to stay green for me. I was trying to prepare myself for it to turn red, but I was also thinking, ah, maybe I'll make it. And, uh, you know, just, yeah, it proved itself. All right, what do we have going in here? Looks like uh, oh, Courtyard by Marriott, so um, a hotel going in over here. Yeah, Electric Avenue. That's what I thought. That's what the name of the street was. Uh, this truck stop here has a port of subs. It's actually a pretty good uh, sub shop, and I got really good uh, brownies too. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I do already have food in the truck though, so I don't know that I'll order anything. But it's yeah, options are options. If you like to. You know, have food or whatever that's not in your truck sometimes. You know, there are plenty of drivers out here who do like to have options. And, uh, yeah, I got Burger King right here next door. Uh, thanks, Dick. All right, there we go. Shanghai Express. I think, uh, yeah, once there's a Chinese restaurant over here as well. Yeah. Well, there's a sign there for Shanghai Express. I've never been to it, but I believe there are. Yeah. Uh, okay, you got uh, plenty of space here. I'll probably park it right next to this drive in, this legend truck. Park like shit. They're not even lined up with the lines. It actually makes me wonder if I want to even park right there because I can tell that this guy's parked like shit, but I guess it doesn't matter too much. Just tighten it up and uh, yeah, that way more trucks can park here. Sweet. 
Okay, well, that's gonna end my uh, my day, but not the video, because uh, I don't deliver till 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. So um, when it's time to make our delivery, I will probably just go ahead and resume this uh, from the guard shack. All right? Yeah, kind of help keep this not too long for you guys. All right, so uh, hang tight for that. All right, guys, we're all checked in here, and uh, we got Dock Door 340. Uh, again, here, there was only one truck in line in front of me, so uh, this was real easy to get in here. Okay, traditionally, when you uh, deliver here, uh, when you get through docking in, you're supposed to bobtail over to the bullpen area, which is uh, fine by me. Um, Although I think the last few times I come here, uh, they stopped making this uh, bobtail over the bullpen and uh, let you just uh, disconnect and stay parked in front, uh, basically in front of your trailer. Alright, nobody coming. We're going to go this way. Yeah, it's me still a little bit gimpy though. It's, I mean, uh, my foot, you know, the pain is, uh, it kind of comes and goes. Uh, it seems to get better when I take the ibuprofen. But, you know, even then I still have a little bit of a limp. Uh, right now it's a little more sore over by, uh, I guess I'd say where the toes meet up with the foot, somewhere in that ballpark. So yeah, right over here on the end of this row of drop trailers, you'll see that tractor sitting there. Uh, that would be the bullpen area if you choose to uh, park in the bullpen. All right, 340, we're going to be pretty far down the lane. I don't mind exercise at all, so I don't mind walking, but at the same time, I my foot like it is it may just come on over here I don't know eh, no, I don't know I might just go ahead and walk all right we're by 320 right now so we're gonna be pretty far down the lane uh, before we even looks like Giltner's in 330 So I'm going to be way over here by this uh, prime, it looks like. Uh, prime's in 338, so we'll go ahead and uh, stop right here. Open my doors. Okay, so uh, looks actually looks like I'm gonna be yeah two spots fast prime and uh, right next to the stairs and there'll be another vacant spot next to me. All right, not quite enough for a straight back, but real close.
how perfectly we need to be lined up with that line. It looks like pretty close. So it looks like we're right in the neighborhood where oop, I need to get moved over more because my door on the passenger side is going to come pretty close to hitting that, uh, the stair rails. It's a little bit hard and ricocheted uh, more than normal. Alright, there we go. Also noticing on this trailer, I saw it yesterday actually uh, once or twice. Uh, my my uh, status light there on the side of the trailer was amber. You might have just noticed that when I was disconnecting. Um, so yeah, I was intermittently amber once, or it might have been more, but I just noticed it once yesterday. And it just happened again. And it turns out it's just uh, it's a code uh, Alpha 131, basically check evaporative temp sensor. It's not going to affect the, the reefer unit's performance. Um, but next time the trailer gets serviced, want to get uh, probably want to get it looked at. I'm not going to worry about doing that before um, you know getting that kind of problem fixed uh, before picking up my next load, though. Which we'll talk about on the way out of here, okay? Alright, uh, so I'll stand by for, uh, for that part. Alright guys, we're already done here. Um, it was barely after 5 a.m. by the time they were already calling me, telling me that, to come in and get my bills. So, told you this is the best Walmart to go to. Alright, it's getting hooked up. Raise my airbags back up. Alright guys, so we'll just go ahead uh, down the street first, because uh, like I said, we got out of here so fast. Get my status changed. Oh, wait on this guy. Okay, let's get it rolling. Is that reefer unit ever going to turn off? I already turned off the power switch for it. I don't know why it's still running. Okay, so to summarize this, uh, 
I got docked in about 335, got to check it in by a 340 or so. Had a 0400 appointment time and shortly after 5 a.m., I think maybe 5.05 if even that. Uh, I was already getting a call, hey, your bills are ready. So, hey, yeah, I've, I've had multiple times I've come here and had great experiences as far as getting out of here in a timely manner. And the, and the people inside the receiving office are always friendly, too. I've had, uh, yeah, there are plenty of other Walmart DCs that I go to where, you know, or some of the people I deal with are not the most friendly in the world, I'll put it that way. Not necessarily a downright rude, but um, definitely not the most uh, friendly seeming. So, my hat's off to the Sparks Walmart DC. Every time I come here, I have good experiences. Friendly people in the office all the time and always very timely. I'm definitely doing something right here. All right, so you guys might have noticed also, uh, I hooked up to my trailer. Yeah, this is mainly for those of you guys who are not so experienced. Or maybe you are experienced truckers, but you have bad habits. Um, just going to give you a little reminder, a tip here. Yeah, as I say, uh, well, you know, some of you guys know better already, but just have bad habits and don't care. And some of you guys are just new. And I'm more directing at the, the new uh, newer drivers. Uh, you might have noticed when I hooked up to my trailer, uh, I still went over and grabbed my uh, my flashlight and looked underneath to visually inspect the fifth wheel. Okay, even if I could hear it latching, uh, I'm over here for it, uh, to, to not run over the, uh, the scale there. Now, even if I heard it latch, you know, from here in the truck when I was hooking up, I still want to double check because I've had times where I've had a partial latch. You know, uh, not in this truck ever, but I have had it happen in the past. Um, you know, where it sounds like it latches or pretty close to it, and then I, I go visually inspect visually inspect and then I find out it's not even actually latched. It's, it was mostly latched but not completely. Alright, let's go uh, turn this uh, TCR in and uh, close the door. I think that uh, the main power switch that we have on all of our JCT trailers, I think it's been bypassed because uh, the LED on it never lights up and it wasn't having any impact on the trailer, uh, you know, the reefer unit shutting down. So, must mean they bypassed it like there's a problem with it. So, I had to use the regular, uh, the, the, uh, the toggle switch that's inside the guarded uh, you know the switch guard or as, uh, when I was in aircraft maintenance I would have called it the guarded toggle switch uh, flip it to the off position instead right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll end this down here at the truck stop again uh, I'm gonna want to stop and get fuel there first before I leave the area anyway and so I'm gonna give you an idea of what's going on here also. Uh, we'll be picking up a reload in Tracy, California at the Lapino Foods facility. That's a small and interesting place to go pick up from. Uh, I've live streamed from there before, but uh, it's not like really compartmentalized, I guess, and easy to, you know, 
if you're just trying to get intel on the customer, it's um, not as easy to find that video when it's, like I say, a lot longer because there was a live stream where I started from somewhere else. Um, so not only do you have to find the video, but you also have to find what part of the video is of interest to you. So uh, that will be a different situation uh, this time around because I will be not live recording and I will have a much smaller video, a much shorter video and with bookmarks and the description for you. Um, to help make it much easier to find exactly what video you're looking for and what you're looking for in the video. Now that load doesn't pick up till uh, 1300 today. Uh, it's about a four hour or so drive from here. It's 220 miles. And it's barely after five. It's almost 530 now. If I leave now it'd barely be like 930. I do uh, kind of do need a washout. I don't, uh, depending on how the inside looks. Uh, there is a truck wash off the same exit that I'll be going to using for Leprino. Uh, I can always use it to get washed down. Uh, I may end up sitting there for two hours though, so I don't know. I'll look at uh, options there for uh, washouts. I'll get my tractor fuel right here at Golden Gate Travel Plaza, Golden State Travel Plaza, before I uh, go into California where fuel is more expensive. I have enough to get this load pro probably all the way down to. Is what I'm gonna do. Uh, that load will be going to Greeley, Colorado. Uh, however, uh, we'll most likely be dropping it in our, in our San Bernardino drop yard because I don't have much for hours. Uh, actually, I think I might have just barely, barely enough uh, hours to work with to go get the load picked up and then get it back to uh, to get it back to um, San Bernardino before I run out of clock again. And then only get 3.30 or so back tonight on my recap, so if all goes well, I get it, uh, get it down there, get it dropped off at the yard, and uh, maybe do a 34 or something at the house uh, before, I, uh, before I reload. All right, I do see uh, a couple of spots over here, some pull-throughs. Um, let's see what we have over here first, though. Yeah, I can, uh, and you know what, actually, yeah, we'll do that one. It's more room there. I can do a, a more straight back setup here. Not quite straight back because, uh, the guy here with the Walmart trailer, but, so I'll have to modify it a little bit. myself all mixed up. Get myself pointed more toward this guy over here first. Just to get my tandems over there more and then now let's get back more toward this guy. I want to be able to see around both sides of my trailer before I start getting past this guy's plane over here on my blind side. Okay guys, well that's going to wrap this one up, uh, again, uh, my favorite Walmart DC to go to, uh, it's a great spot where I can go ahead and get a little bit more rest or whatever uh, before I get ready to roll, and swap out my SD cards, get fuel and all that crap, and then we'll get moving, and we'll have another video um, for you, uh, coming up um, in the near future, hopefully the uh, day after you see this one. 
I'm picking up at Lapino Foods in Tracy, California. All right. Uh, you guys all have a great day, and we'll see you in that one. All right. Thanks.